Today I want to dig a little deeper into conceptual understanding of the Common Core 1 NBT 4, which states, add within 100, including adding a two-digit number and a one-digit number, and adding a two-digit number and a multiple of 10, using concrete models or drawings, and strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. Relate the strategy to a written method and explain the reasoning used. Understand that in adding two-digit numbers, one adds tens and tens, ones and ones, and sometimes it is necessary to compose a ten. When I started thinking about how to really get a first grader to conceptually understand how to add those um, bigger numbers, I really had to think about what was really easy for them to use and what provided them with the, the most um, obvious sense of tens. So the supplies that I would recommend are these little 10 frames. I've got several already filled out, plenty to use for this exercise. I have singles or ones, also called counters, and then I have dry erase markers and dry erase boards. What I'm going to do is move through a progression. We want to make sure that the kids first understand how to add 10 and some more which would be working with teens. 10 and some more. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 10 and some more. If they can represent this, then they're ready to move on to the next stage. The next stage would be, in my opinion, adding two digit numbers plus 10. A two digit number should be represented first, maybe 22 or maybe 23, let's say 23. Now, can the student add 10? Jeremiah, thank you for helping me today. Can you show us how would you add 10 to 23? What would you use to add 10 to that? Eight. If you were going to add 10 more to this pile right here, first tell me how much this is. 23. How do you know? Because um, I know um, 3 plus 2 equals 5, and then the same thing. Ten, and then it looks exactly the same, so that's 20, and 1, 2, 3. Okay, 20, 1, 2, 3. Alright, so add 10 more. That was fantastic, and I followed along really well with you. I wonder if the camera people followed along with you, so I'm going to explain what you did. Unless, would you like a turn to explain what you did? I, I, um. When you added 10, what did you do? There was three, so then I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I did eight times 10. And I, since, um, Trade them out. You traded. And then there were seven, but not ten. So I did three, eight, nine, ten. And I, I knew seven was close to ten, so I didn't just already know just do that. Okay, so you weren't exactly sure that to just do that. Okay, but you went ahead and added on up. That's fantastic, Jeremiah. Give me five. Brilliant. Um, so that was excellent. I mean, he is already ready um, for that concept of trading tens and ones. If the child was, maybe I'll say the next step forward, they maybe would realize that to add a 10, you just need to add one of these. So let's do that again. Here you have 23. Add a 10. Boom. 33. 33. And that's where we want them to get. If they're not there, stay there a little while. It's okay to stay there and make sure that they understand, hey, I'm just adding a 10, so I'm going to just change the tens place. I'm not even going to worry about those ones because I'm not changing anything. 
right? Okay, so now we have 33. Now that would be your next step. The next step beyond that is adding a two digit number plus some ones. And in this case, I would want the ones to be maybe bigger in the ones place so that we can provide a place for them to do that regrouping exercise. Um, let's say we have 34, Jeremiah, 34, okay? I'm going to write down what we're going to have. 34, and I would like you to add eight more, eight more. What will you do to solve that problem? You have 34 already, and you need eight more. Can you count out loud so that we can know what you're doing? take just a moment. We're going to redo that because I think there's something really valuable that you're going to teach other children. Jeremiah, when he laid down his counters, first of all, he started by adding eight, but he laid them down in such a way that it was organized into those ten frames already. This helps his brain organize and be able to still count on. He doesn't have to count those again and make sure that they're ten because it's a ten frame. So he knew when he got five and five, visually he didn't have to count that. He knew it was time to trade in. So I, I interrupted you. This was four, and you're counting eight more. I'm going to count for you because I interrupted you. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so he finished by finishing out that eight. What is the answer then to 34 plus eight more? Oh, you're gonna answer it, go for it, buddy. So what's the answer? Okay, and what you're gonna notice here, hopefully, is that there was no talk of carrying the ones over to the tens place. There was no regrouping. All he had to do was simply represent, add on, trade, and write. The reason I don't even talk about the regrouping as far as putting the one up above the tens place is because that's very abstract. There's no reason in the mind of a six-year-old or a seven-year-old and why we would do that. Yes, you can get them to do that. You can teach them to do that, but that's procedural. And again, we're not talking about procedural. There will be a time for that later, but for right now at six and seven, this is the most important place, is to help them understand how to represent, add more, trade or regroup conceptually, and then write their answer. After you get really good at this, the next step would be to add a two-digit number plus a two-digit number, or maybe you're not regrouping, okay? So let me show you what that would look like. My little eraser here. Let's do 34 this time, Jeremiah. 34, okay? 34, um, how about plus 12? Mm, I'm going to write that so that you can see. Jeremiah, look how I kept my tens with my tens and my ones with my ones. That's really important when you're adding two two-digit numbers that you do keep them together when you're doing that. So for me, I would say for them, the best way to do that is to represent both numbers first. So we'll represent 34, done. Can you represent 12 right here, showing where the tens go and showing where the ones go, but right here, just like my numbers. I'm going to just scooch these way over here. Why am I doing that? Okay, so we're going to keep our ones place the same, in the same little area, and we're going to keep our tens in the same area. Right? Good job. So now he has represented both numbers. 
as you can see, there won't be a need to gather and trade. So I would say that this would be the next step where they're actually seeing a two-digit number plus another two-digit number. Now, Jeremiah, how will you find the answer to 34 plus 12? My goodness, that's such a big number. How will you do that? You can tell that his conceptual understanding is great because he's already gone a little bit into the procedural. I would not expect most of the students to be there, if any. Um, you will have some. You will have some there. And that's great, and I want to celebrate that. So you really understand your place value, dude. I'm proud of you. For the rest, we'll need to make sure that we conceptually show that. So here's what I would want him to do. Now, you told me with your fingers looking at this problem, so that's great. What about this? What will this look like? Show and prove the answer. Prove the answer. How will you know what 34 plus 12 is? How will you do that? Um, take that and put it with the 10. Um, then you do this. Which is the same as? 40. 40. So smart. You want to prove that? 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. And then um, 3, 20, you take 3 and then take 3 plus 6. Oh my goodness. You must have a really good first grade teacher, Jeremiah. Miss Herring has really done her work. I love that you split 3 and 3 more instead of just. One, two, three, four, five, six, which could happen, and that's fantastic. But the fact that you did it that way made it faster. faster. We call that efficiency. 3 plus 3 equals 6 is 46. 46. Do you see how he didn't even have to count one by one? He could have, though. That's an excellent way to do that. Nothing wrong with that at all, is there? We all have different levels of understanding. Once your students get beyond this, and they're really good at it, certainly as Jeremiah is, it's now time to do two-digit plus two-digit again with maybe bigger numbers.